Okay, Algebra 1 fans, our topic for today, this is notes section 5-1, graphing inequalities. After this lesson, students should be able to graph inequalities on a number line, and we'll add to that by saying we're going to also learn how to write inequalities. So before we begin, let me give you your joke of the day. What time do ducks wake up? And the answer is, at the quack of dawn. So we're going to start here with a little bit of vocabulary, inequality vocabulary. Now, we're all familiar with this sign here. That means is equal to or equals. So if I say that the number 4 is equal to the number 4, a number is equal to itself. That is a true statement. Now, next to that, this means not equal to. You have an equal sign with a slash through it, so that is not the case. We could say that 4 is not equal to 5. Now, here, this is what we're going to be looking at for the most part. These symbols, we always read this left to right. That means less than. That symbol is less than. So if I say 4 is less than 5. So I read it from left to right. Now, one way that you may... Um, have been explained this before. If you think of this as a big mouth, like an alligator mouth, the mouth opens to the bigger number. So this, in this case, the mouth is opening to 5, which is bigger than 4. Now if I switch the symbol, that is now greater than. So if I had written 5 and then 4, in this order, I would say 5 is greater than 4. So the mouth, again, opens to the larger number for that. So we have less than, greater than, and notice that by switching the two numbers, I switch the symbols. If I say uh, 7 is greater than 2, then I could also say 2 is less than 7. Those both mean the same thing, it's just the order of the numbers is different, therefore the symbol is switching its direction. Now the last two, you have less than and then a, a line or a bar below that. That means less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. If I try to say 2 is less than 2, that is a false statement. That is not true. A number cannot be less than itself. 2 is not smaller than or less than itself. However, I could say 2 is less than or equal to itself because it fits this part right here. 2 is less than or equal to 2. And then this means greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. So again, I cannot write 3 is greater than 3. That's false. But I can say that 3 is greater than or equal to 3. That would be a true statement. Greater than or equal to. Now this leads to what we call the trichotomy property. Tri means 3. For all real numbers a and b, exactly one of the following is true. So if I pick two random real numbers, either a is greater than b, a is less than b, or A is equal to B. That's the only three things that can happen. One number is greater than the other, it's less than the other, or it's equal to the other. That's called the trichotomy property. Okay, so in the second part here, graphing inequalities on a number line, graph the following inequalities on a number line. Now number one, X is equal to two. When I graph this, if you want to number each individual value, say 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, you can do that. But in this case, I'm just going to do for a positive number, I will put it to the right of 0. And I'll say, okay, there's 2. If it's a negative number, I'll put it to the left of 0. Now, x is equal to 2. There's only one value that makes this true, and that's when x is at 2 when x is equal to 2. If I want to say that y is equal to negative 4, 
the only value that makes this true would be negative 4. So negative 4 is on the left side of 0 because it's negative. And what I do is I put a circle there. Now if I say z is greater than 5, now here's the thing about an inequality. There is more than one answer to this. Can you think of a number that is bigger than 5, that's greater than 5? So you might say, well, 6 is greater than 5. You might say 10 is greater than 5. You might say 5.0001 is greater than 5. All of these are true statements. So the thing is, we have an infinite number of solutions to this. These are all solutions to the inequality. They're values that make this true. So how do I graph if I have an infinite number of true values? Well, the first thing we do is we plot the number, which is 5. So 5 is positive, so I'll put it over here. Now we have to ask ourselves if 5 is a solution to this. If I write 5 greater than 5, is that true? And the answer is no. That is a false statement. That does not work. So I'm not going to put a circle here that's shaded in. The way that we graph this is we put an open circle and then we say, well, where are all the points that are greater than 5? Well, that would be everything to the right of 5. So again, this would be 6 and 10 and 5.0001. And the way that we do that, we don't just put a bunch of points on here because we can't put infinite points. What we do is we draw an arrow in that direction. And what that means is that any value that is represented with this arrow here, that the arrow is part of, those are all solutions. And we put the arrow because it continues to the right. It will continue all the way to positive infinity. So an open circle, Again, an open circle means that that value is not part of the solution set. Not part of the solution set. If we do a closed circle, then it is part of the solution. So you'll hear me say in the video quite a bit, we're going to talk about whether it's open or closed. Open, it's not part of the solution. Closed, it's part. It's included with that. Okay, so let's do some more examples here. Um, number four, a is less than negative three. Well, negative three, let's plot that. That's left of zero, it's a negative number. Is negative three part of the solution? So I can write it and I can ask myself, is negative three less than itself? The answer is no, that's false. So that means this is an open circle. Now where are all the values that are less than negative three? So what answers are smaller than negative three? Well, I could say negative four. I could say negative five. I could say negative 1,000. Those are all less than negative three. So those are going this way. So I'm going to draw my arrow to the left this time. Now what some people might say, and you can do this, less than means we graph to the left. Less than is to the left. As long as the variable is first. As long as the, the letter x, a, whatever it is, is first. All right, number five, c is not equal to zero. Well, zero is already on the number line. Not equal to is an open circle. Now, if you try to think what values are not equal to zero, well, one, two, so anything positive is not equal to zero, but also anything negative is not equal to zero. Negative two is not equal to zero. Negative five is not equal to zero. So basically, the whole number line gets shaded except for the number zero itself. Number six d is greater than or equal to negative 4. So now we have this equal to part. Now negative 4 is to the left of 0. But this time, if I substitute negative 4 for d, 
is negative 4 greater than or equal to itself? Yes, that is true because we have the equal to part. So this is a closed circle. We will include this as part of the answer. Greater than or equal to goes this way. E is less than or equal to 6. So positive 6 is over here. Less than or equal to, that's going to be a closed circle because 6 is less than or equal to itself. That's true. So I will close the circle. Now less than goes to the left. All the values that are less than 6, 5, 4, 0, negative 10, negative 20, those are all less than or equal to 6. Now number 8, 6 is greater than f. Well, here's 6. We already know, because it's greater than, that it's going to be open. So that's the other thing when you're trying to figure out is it open or closed. If you have greater than or less than, it's automatically an open circle. If you have greater than equal or less than equal, that is going to be a closed circle for that. Now here's where I have to be careful though. Now normally I think greater than goes to the right because less than goes to the left. But notice that the variable is on the right side. It is not on the left side. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write this by switching the sides. If 6 is greater than f, then that means that f is less than 6. Okay, I'm going to go back up here to the top. If 7 is greater than 2, well, that means that 2 is less than 7. So I'd write it this way. I have to switch my symbol. So f less than 6, less than is going to the left. Negative 5 less than or equal to g. That's the same thing as g greater than or equal to negative 5. So we go to negative 5. We close the circle. That means that negative 5 is part of the solution. Greater than or equal to, the larger numbers go to the right. 1 is greater than or equal to h. Well, we can say h is less than or equal to 1. Here's positive 1. Less than or equal to means it's a closed circle. And all the values less than 1 go to the left. Now, in number 11 and number 12, we have a different situation. We actually have two values, and the variable is between those two variables, between the two values, excuse me. Negative 2 is less than i is less than positive 2. So that means that i is between these two numbers. So on the number line, here's negative 2, here's positive 2. Can you think of numbers that are between negative 2 and positive 2? Well, 0, 1, negative 1 half, negative 0 0.5, uh, negative 1. All of these values are between negative 2 and positive 2, so they would be part of this solution set. Now, is negative 2 a value that works? If I try to say negative 2 is less than negative 2, that is false. So this is an open circle at negative 2. It is an open circle at positive 2 because it doesn't have the equal to part. And the value for i, the variable, is between them. So to graph between, I'm going to draw my connection between them. So that includes this whole thing. In some books, you might see this where they just shade the number line like this. Okay, or here they just shade it on the number line. I like to draw arrows to do that. Do a couple more here, number 12. Negative eight is less than or equal to j is less than negative three. So here's negative eight, here's negative three. Less than or equal to is closed. Less than negative 3 is open. And where's the j value? It is between them. So I'm going to connect between. All right, if we flip it over, we'll do a few more here at the top. 
What if we have a word like and that separates this? k is greater than negative 2 and k is less than or equal to 5. Here's negative 2. Here's positive 5. So if we have this word and, then what we'll do is we'll graph these separately. k is greater than negative 2 would be open, open circle. Now greater than goes this way, to the right, all the way to the right. k is less than or equal to 5. Less than or equal to means it's a closed circle. But less than goes to the left. Now notice that part of this number line has both colors, has red and green. Well, that's going to be our solution set. Greater than negative 2, less than or equal to 5, we want, when you see the word and, it's what they have together. It's what they both have. It's called the intersection. Where do they cross each other? And where they cross is right here. So this is the same thing as what we just did on the front side. We could have written this negative 2, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, negative 2 is less than k is less than or equal to 5. We'll do one more here. I'm going to skip 14 and I'm going to do 15. If the word is or and is less than negative 5 and is greater than 0, so again, I'm going to graph each one individually. Less than negative 5 is open circle. Less than goes to the left. Greater than 0 is open, goes to the right. When you have an or problem, that is called the union. That is everything they have. Everything they have. So notice they don't overlap. They're, this is not an and problem. And we would be graphing between but or goes opposite directions. And that is the end of part one.